you guys. Happy Friday. Welcome to my channel. I'm so excited that you're here today. This is a good DIY. I have not done a handbag in forever and I gotta tell you I am obsessed with how this one came out. Mm. Today we are hacking this like $2,000 denim patchwork awesome bag. The original is by Dolce & Gabbana and the big one's like eight grand, the mini's like 1800. The one we're gonna do is right around the $2,000 range. You can do this to a purse you already own and even better, it is totally no so. It is no so. I'm very excited. We are going to be using my absolute favorite fabric glue, which I use in all of my no so DIYs. It's called Fabri-Tac. Now, the reason I love it so much for this project and for all my projects is that it goes on clear and it dries clear. It remains flexible, which is super important when you're talking about your clothing, right? It's machine washable, which is huge. It also works with like everything, fabric to fabric, leather, metal, stone, wood, glass. Like it's really crazy and it's not toxic and it's just amazing things that I love about it. Another thing that I really love is that there's this like quick dry element. It will set up in about 45 to 50 seconds. However, it's not gonna fully cure for 24 hours. So it sets up enough that I can move on to the next part of my project, but not so much that I don't have time to like finagle and tweak and make some changes, which I really, really love. Beacon, which is the family owned company that actually makes Fabri-Tac is sponsoring this video. Now don't tell them this because it's probably a waste. I would have used this glue anyway, as it is the only glue that I use in all of my no-so projects, but I will take the support and I will take the love, especially because they are giving you guys a discount code on their website. So I have a code, it is orly15. It will take 15% off any glue products on their website, from Fabri-Tac to Gem-Tac, which is like their gem glue, to their foam glues, they have a quick grip, they have the one called Power-Tac, which is like a super glue. Incredible, whether you buy one bottle or a case of it, it's going to take 15% off, which is amazing. I always recommend getting a case of the minis. I'm a huge fan of the minis. I love cracking open like a fresh bottle for each project. It just keeps it nice and clean and crisp. It's like just enough glue. I will put all of the info down below for the website, the promo code, the links, all the info, all that good stuff. Hope that you guys will take advantage of that. Let's get into this DIY. It's so good and I'm obsessed with the finished product. So I hope you guys like it. Let's do it. Now, this is the purse I had originally planned on using because I loved that sort of strap detail. You can see there's some fabric paint on the inside for another project I was testing out, but what I decided to do was grab some black fabric paint and just paint out any of the elements of the purse I knew I wasn't gonna be able to hide with the actual denim. So I painted out the little front tabs that hold that strap and also the side tabs that will hold my shoulder strap. Now, this is an old uh, Levi's thrifted vest that I've had forever. I keep thinking I'm gonna do something with it and I never do, so today is the frickin' day, I'm gonna use it. I'm cutting out just large pieces, trying to incorporate any of the cool elements that are already on the jacket, like the collar and the seams and the straps and the buttons and the pockets and all of those things, and I'll figure out where and how I'm gonna use them in a minute. Now, it was right here when I realized I'm being crazy. I started painting out the center front to obviously get rid of that rainbow effect, and I thought, why am I doing this? I have a black bag. I'm an idiot. So. I grabbed the black bag and I just grabbed some pliers and removed the chain strap because I didn't really love the strap that it came with. I'm actually gonna use the one from the maroon bag down the road. So here we go, here is my bag. Now the first thing that you wanna do is just start, pick one spot and start there. Figure out what element of your jacket you wanna use on what element of your purse. It's really just a matter of starting to lay a few pieces out at a time and having maybe two or three pieces ready to go that you know where they are going to go before you actually glue. I figured out that this piece, which is all along the hem, would look really cool if I did it along the side basically wrapping all the way up over the top, down the back, and on the bottom. It was one big piece that could fit. I'm not gluing anything, I'm just making sure that it works. And I know that I want this part of my collar to be center front. So I know those two pieces are where I'm starting and therefore that is where I'm starting. I'm gonna grab my Fabri-Tac and I'm putting a thin line all along the edge and through the center where I know this piece is going. Lay everything really flat and at first I put it right up to the edge thinking that I was going to actually leave the entire inside black. So I'm trimming it up, making sure that it's super tight with my fabric scissors. I end up changing that later and you'll see why the sort of quick dry slash 24 hour cure time of the Fabri-Tac is really great. 
So I take this next piece and I only glued the front because I'm not sure what I'm doing on the back yet. I'm just gluing the front and making sure to curve it while it glues so that it dries fitting the rounded shape as opposed to if I had laid it flat, it wouldn't actually be able to close. It would like pop if I tried to close it. Now here is another example of the good sort of quick dry element. I was able to pull back that front collar when I decided that I wanted to put this piece in there. So I just pulled it back because it hadn't fully dried. I added this piece underneath it and then folded it over so that I would have a fully rounded edge across all of my edges. Now this is an old, you know, I save just all denim. Like I just save a bunch because I always have random needs for them. So this was another pair of light blue jeans. And when you're doing this, I really recommend having a few variations of color. Now, right here, I still need the snap to function. I want it to function like a real purse. So what you're gonna do is take your fabric, put it on top of your snap, and basically create like an X that is the size of your snap. Then go around and around in a circle connecting the X's and you end up with a perfect circle that will fit your snap so that it will actually function. Put down your fabric glue, use your fingernails to kind of tuck it in so that it's a really smooth seal, lay everything flat, and then you can start folding things down to create clean finish edges. I recommend always leaving about an inch or two excess so that you have the option to fold things down, fold things over. You can always cut after the fact, but having that overlap is really nice. Now I knew that I wanted the armhole. This is actually the armhole of the vest because I thought it almost looked like a pocket, which I really liked. This was the right location for it, but obviously it covers up my snap. So I'm gonna do the same thing. Feel for my snap, snip a little bit, then cut my X and connect my X until I have a hole. I wanted to make sure that it would actually snap if I did this double layer, so I tested it and it works beautifully. So now it's just time to add fabric glue right over that hole, lay everything flat, and we're starting to get there. I trim off the excess on the left there because I know that I wanna add another pop of the light blue. The light blue that's at the top right there is getting hidden when my purse is closed, and I really liked the way the colors look together. So right here, I'm adding another simple piece, and in these corners, it's gonna be specific based off your purse, but this is almost like a cardboard box. When you cut straight down, one part is able to fold in through the center front, while the other part can make like a right-hand turn, fold over the other side. Your purse will be specific. Maybe yours is a circle, or rounded edges, a bucket bag. You just wanna make sure to kind of like, it's like geometry, just like fold things, look at things, figure out how they go. Now, this is similar to the snap. This little tab is what my purse handle will get attached to, and so I wanna make sure to create access to it. I don't wanna hide any of the important hardware and elements, they need to be accessible. So simple cut, and it went right in and opened it up, and now that piece is fully accessible. Here again, you can see I'm folding it over. And for right now, I leave all of these edges raw. However, you could go in there with some of the trim, like the hem detail or even like a little ribbon and sort of hide it all. It's up to you. You just really wanna take your time to make sure things are laying flat. That's the most important part. Now, this is that piece that again, you saw I went over the front, but I didn't glue the back. It's time to glue the back. And again, make sure you actually close the purse. Close it and round it. Make sure that it has time to dry in this more rounded shape. And again, with all of these sort of corners, you just want to start folding them, looking at them like a present, looking them like a box, figuring out how to create sharp right angles and remove any excess fabric. It's really important that you try to get rid of as much of the bulky excess. That way you can layer the fabrics on top of each other without having this like big bulky area. I thought about adding a pocket to the back. I thought, my God, I have to use this pocket. It's too cool not to use. But this one itself was just too big. There was no way to really incorporate it. So I actually grabbed this pocket, which is one of the pockets on the side of the jacket. And I figured, well, if I turn it the wrong way, it could almost function as a real pocket that maybe I could put my cell phone in. Again, I'm trying to get rid of all the bulk. So I'm cutting anything out that I don't absolutely need. That way when I do lay this down, I get the function of the pocket without all the bulk of the multiple layers. So I'm gluing the bottom down so that it's fully secure and strong at the bottom. But when I get to this top part, I'm only applying glue to the right and left hand side. Do not apply any glue to the center or obviously your pocket won't function. It will just be glued flat and you won't be able to open it. So by only gluing the sides, it allows that center pocket to actually function like a pocket, which is great. Now I trim the top because I know I want to add some of that bright blue to the front. 
I, this was a piece I cut out of the pocket and I loved the like bleach defect that happened at some point. I wanted it front and center. I loved the way it looked, really cool texture. So I did it so that you're gonna see it from the front and the back. And again, you can see how I'm lifting it and tucking it into other elements, underneath other elements. Again, that's the great part of this glue is just like the initial drying time, but then the flexibility. I popped my cell phone in there to make sure that it actually worked and it functions like a pocket. I was very excited. Now this is basically my last piece. I wanted to clean finish the right side of the bag, similar to the vibe I've got going on the left without mirroring it too perfectly. I liked the idea of having the vertical piece go down around the side, but I didn't want them to be matching. So not only did I pick a different color, but I also picked a different width and a different area of the denim. What it's gonna end up doing is it's gonna give like a cool balance where it does feel like it was designed on purpose, but it's not so matchy matchy and so mirrored. So I was pretty much done. The purse was looking really good, except when I looked at the bottom. I didn't love how all of the different elements came together in such a like messy way. So I grabbed a piece of my hem and I cut it and I'm cutting off the bulk. Again, I want it to be as thin as possible so that it doesn't get too bulky. And I just laid it right in the middle center bottom. That way all of the different elements of denim come together underneath it and it looks pretty clean finished. Now. We're done with the main part of the bag. All I needed to do now, which is totally optional, is the strap. I grabbed the burgundy strap from my other purse and I had a plan which I don't end up following through with. My original plan was to only add this piece of denim to one side of the strap. And that's because I was actually gonna use this button placket. And I planned on folding the button placket in half, like that, folding it around. So you were gonna see a little bit of the burgundy on the folded side right there. So that was the reason I only did half. After looking at it, I just didn't really like it. So I peeled it off and I added another piece of denim to the other side. So now at least it's clean finished. At this point, I can leave it like this or maybe I could put this in the center so it's sort of like a larger statement shoulder strap or even this little small guy. Ultimately, I decide to go with none of it because it felt, I don't know, it started feeling like a little cheesy, like incorporating a little bit too much of the jean jacket. So I went without. This is the other option that you guys have, adding some kind of embellishment to it. Adding sort of vintage dusty gold was looking really cool. I also had this brooch, which I added, or this skull. I was super undecided, so I threw it up on Instagram and it was literally like a 50-50 tie, so I was stuck. I even grabbed these little guys, which are meant for like shoes, like straps. Ultimately, I decided to go with nothing. That is it. Um, I gotta say, I love how this one came out. You can do this technique to anything. It doesn't only have to be a handbag. It could be a pair of shoes, it could be a skirt. Just keep this technique open in your mind of how you can create your own patchwork pieces. And um, thanks for being here. I appreciate you guys so much and I will see you next week for another great video. Mwah. I love you guys.